Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in the today's session, we are going to discuss JMITA interview questions. So we are going to look into what interview questions are being asked, whether at the beginner level or at the advanced level in different companies for JMITA. So this will be a series of videos where we will discuss the interview questions which I have listed down. So let's get started. And before jumping into the interview questions, I assume that you have the overall idea of JMeter and if you don't have, I would suggest you to please go through the basics of JMeter. Please try to create three to four projects by yourself, which will help you very much at the time of the interview. So for that, you can refer to my previous video. So I have created several videos on JMeter. So you can go through these videos to have an overview of the JMeter. So I will share the links in the description. So let's get started. Let's move to the interview questions. So we will start very basic and you must know the proper answer of all the basic questions. So let's get started with the first question we have. So the first question of the series is what is performance testing? So let's discuss the answer to this question. So first point is performance testing is a non-functional testing. So you can categorize the testing in two parts. First one is functional testing where we test the functionalities of the application where the functionalities of the application is working properly or not. And the next one is the non-functional testing. So in non-functional testing what we test, we test the performance, usability, reliability of the application. So performance testing is basically a non-functional testing where we are going to test the performance of the application. We are going to test usability and reliability of the application. So now let's look into the next point. So the performance testing ensures that the application performs well under expected workload. So what does this mean? Now every application is designed to handle a particular workload. So let's assume that there is an application under test which can handle 100 users, maximum of 100 users at a time. Now the performance testing, what the performance testing will do, the performance testing will ensure that if all the users, if all the 100 users are logged into that application and if all the 100 users are working on that application at the same time, the application is performing as per expectation or not. So we will check this point by performance testing. So now moving to the next point, performance testing also examines the application behavior under unexpected workload. So we have assumed that our application under test can handle 100 users at a time. Now what if the number of users has been increased to 150? So what will happen at that time whether the application got crashed or the application is working fine. So the performance testing also examines the application behavior under unexpected workload. Okay. So now moving to the next point. So performance testing basically eliminates the performance bottlenecks. So we will look into this performance bottleneck in much more detail in our next questions. So the performance testing eliminates the performance bottlenecks. And there are a lot of tools in the market to do performance testing. So some of the examples are HP Load Runner and Apache JMeter. Okay. So our first question is over. Let's move to the next question. So next question we have is why performance testing is required? Why we need to do performance testing of any application? So the performance testing is required to measure certain parameters of the application under test before the application goes live. So let's discuss the parameters. So the first parameter in the list is the speed. So we need to measure the speed of the application. So what does it mean? So let's assume that there is a next button in our application under test and when we click on that next button, the other page gets loaded. So we need to test how much time it takes for the next page to get loaded. So this is the meaning of speed. We need to measure the speed of the application and the next parameter which we need to test is the scalability. So what does it mean? So let's say that at a particular point of time, 10 users are working on the application. Now after certain time, the users get increased and it went to 
20 users are working on that application after certain point of time 30 users 40 users are working on the application so we also need to check when the user is getting increased whether the application is performing well or not so that is the meaning of scalability now moving to the next point so we need to measure the stability of the application we need to test whether the application is stable or not so these three parameters we need to test that's why performance testing is required so second question is over let's move to the third question so what are the different types of performance testing so we have different types of performance testing and every time there is a requirement of performance testing we need to know what type of performance testing is required according to the business requirement so according to the business requirement we need to select the type of performance testing so let's see what all type of performance testing we have so the first one in the list is load testing so what does it do load testing checks the application stability to perform under anticipated user load so as we have assumed that our application under test can handle 100 users so load testing is going to check whether the application is stable when all the 100 users are working on that application so if our business requirement is to test whether the application is performing well under expected user load then we are going to choose this load testing now moving to the stress testing so what does it do so the stress testing checks the applications ability to perform under extreme workloads to see how it handles heavy workload now as we assume that we our application can handle 100 users now if we have more than 100 users how the application is behaving in that case how the application is going to handle the heavy workload so if this is the business requirement then you need to go for the stress testing so the objective of stress testing is to identify the breaking point of the application so what does this breaking point mean let's say that we have increased the number of users to 110 from 100 now after a certain point of time we increase the users to 120 130 40 50 now there will be a certain point of time when the application will crash because the applications ability is to handle only 100 users so the aim of the stress testing is to identify the point of time when the application gets crashed so this is about the stress testing and let's move to endurance testing so this testing is done to make sure that the software can handle expected load over a long period of time so we can do this load testing or stress testing maybe for one or two hours but endurance testing is done for a long period of time so sometimes it lasts for five to ten hours or few weeks or a month as well so this endurance testing is done to make sure that the application can work for a long period of time so if this is the business requirement to check the applications ability to work for a longer period of time then you need to go for endurance testing now moving to spike testing so what the spike testing will do so the spike testing is going to test the software's reaction to sudden large spikes in load generated by users so what does it mean so let's say that 10 users have been logged into the application and they are working on the application now at a particular point of time we increased the users to 100 all of a sudden so since we increase the number of users suddenly from 10 to 100 we are going to test whether the application is stable or not in this scenario so if the business requirement is this one so you need to go for the spike testing so these are some of the types of performance testing which we discussed and you can pick up any one of them according to your business requirement now moving to the next question so the next question is list some of the common performance problems faced by users so this is very frequently asked question in the interview to list the common performance problems faced by the users in an application so what could be the performance problems so longer loading time so what does it mean the application under test is taking more time to load than expected 
So let's say that we have a next button in our application and when we click on that button, a new page gets loaded and if the new page is getting loaded after a very long time so this is a performance problem since it is taking a longer loading time and the next one very common performance problem is poor response time so response time is the time to get the response from the server and if the time taken to get the response from the server is very high then it is also a very critical performance issue and the next one in our list is poor scalability. So if in an application the users are getting increased and if in that case the application is not performing well so that is the case of poor scalability and it is also a very critical performance issue. So, so these all are the list of common performance problems faced by the user. Now moving to the next question, list out some common performance bottlenecks. So this is also a very frequent question that has been fre very frequently asked in the interview to list the performance bottlenecks and we need to give the answer to this question in a very proper manner. So to identify the performance bottlenecks, we need to look into these areas that is CPU usage, memory usage, networking usage, software limitation and the disk usage. So let's look into them one by one how to look into the performance bottlenecks in these areas. So first one is CPU usage. So there could be a performance bottleneck under the CPU section if the CPU is overloaded and it is unable to perform task in a timely manner. So if the CPU is overloaded then there is a performance bottleneck under the CPU section. Now moving to the memory usage. So we can have a memory bottleneck and the memory bottleneck implies that the system does not have sufficient or fast enough RAM. So if the memory bottleneck occur, the application will suffer. So what will happen due to the memory bottleneck? It will cut the speed at which the RAM can serve the information to CPU, which slows the overall op operations. So if we have a memory bottleneck, what will happen? The RAM cannot serve the information to the CPU and because of this, it's going to slow the overall operations and this because of this, it's going to slow down the entire application. So that was about the memory bottleneck. Now moving on to the networking usage. So what is this networking bo bottleneck? So networking bottlenecks occur when there is an overloaded server. So definitely if you are working on an application there, would be a server and there would be a network communication as well. So it the network bottleneck occurs when there is a overloaded server, there is a network communication that is overburdened and when the network itself losses integrity. So in these cases network bottleneck occurs and how we can resolve this network bottleneck. So we can resolve this network bottlenecks by upgrading or adding new servers and also we can resolve this network bottleneck by upgrading network hardwares as well so we can under network hardware we can upgrade our routers hubs and access points so in this way we can resolve our network bottleneck issue now moving to the next one so the next one in our list is software limitation so first we need to understand why and how this software limitation occurs so to develop an application, certain piece of program, certain piece of codes are written. So if the program or codes are written or built to handle only finite number of tasks at once, so the program won't utilize any additional CPU or RAM asset even when available. So in this case, software limitation is going to happen because the programs are written only to handle finite number of tasks at once. So even though in that case CPU or the RAM asset is available, it's not the application is not going to utilize the CPU and RAM. So this is the first reason of software limitation and the next reason for software limitation is a program may not be written to work with multiple CPU streams. So if a program is not written to work with multiple CPU streams, so in that case also the program, the application is not going to utilize the entire CPU. So in that case also software limitation occurs and how we can resolve that, we need to resolve it through 
rewriting and patching software that means we need to rewrite our these programs again so that the software limitation can be resolved and the next and the final one in our disk as performance bottleneck is disk usage so disk usage speed we need to improve if we need to remove this as performance bottleneck so we need to improve the disk usage by reducing fragmentation issues and increasing data caching rates in ram so we can do this process to remove that disk usage as a performance bottleneck so you need to be aware of all these performance bottlenecks in a proper manner and you need to give the answer to this question in a perfect way so that was about the performance bottlenecks which we can face now we will move to the next question so the next question in our list is what are the parameters considered for performance testing so this is a very straightforward question if you have done performance testing you would have known that the parameters for performance testing the parameters we should consider for performance testing are these are the major parameters so what does it mean when we have done the performance testing we get the results we get the reports and these all are the parameters these all are the major parameters which we need to analyze to make sure the application is performing well and if the data of all these parameters are not as per expectation that means that the application is not performing properly so that was about the parameters which we need to consider for performance testing and the next question in our list is what is jmeter and how it works so we will look into this question and the onward question in our next session so that's all for this session guys hope you enjoyed the video and if you did give it a like and share with your friends and hit the bell button to get the updates on the latest videos so see you soon in the next video thank you guys bye bye